Keretismata Daimon, and welcome. I wanted to talk a little bit today about the idea of feeding the Kundalini. This is something that uh, I, uh, you hear about through a variety of different uh, Kundalini sources that uh, the Kundalini is hungry, that it needs to be fed, and also that there is a, a change in one's dietary behaviors that often comes as a result of a uh, kundalini awakening activation type of experience. So the way people express this, it runs a wide gamut uh, from, you know, the, the need to snack all the time, nuts, or sometimes you know, people talk about they, you know, just had an incredible sweet tooth as a result of it. Um, and, and, and there's different people, different things that people uh, say that they experience from it. Um, another very common thing that I hear is that people uh, go vegan or vegetarian. You know, this is actually not so uncommon in, in the whole Eastern uh, philosophy and, and mysticism scene, uh, veganism is, is, is fairly common and there's some history behind that as well. So that's another question that comes up is veganism the proper, uh, a proper Kundalini diet? So I'm going to say some things here that are probably unpopular and maybe a little bit radical and controversial, but you know, that's how I roll. I, I, I'm just gonna mention a few historical facts. And I understand that, you know, in, in, in India, uh, there's a, a large amount of uh, vegetarianism and many of the uh, Hindu saints, you know, uh, Ramakrishna and Yogananda and all these guys, uh, for the most part, they all are, are vegetarians and, and recommend veganism. Um, however, there's a couple of things that provide exceptions to this or a question to this. Uh, first is the fact that a Buddha was a meat eater, because it's documented, Buddha's last meal is documented as being pork. So uh, practitioners in that time most certainly did eat meat. So there's that. Now there's also a passage in the Bhagavad Gita, and this is Bhagavad Gita. I'm going to share with you Bhagavad Gita as it is. This is from uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is, translated by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Um, I like this version because he gives a word-by-word -word translation from Sanskrit of everything uh, alongside his um, translation and analysis. So I think it's uh, pretty, I think that that's good. Um, and I've noticed that other versions of the Bhagavad Gita, well, in particular, muck up this, this particular passage that I'm about to read for you. So I'm not going to get into all the different translations and comparing them or anything like that, but um, I'm just going to share this one with you. This is from chapter 17, verse 8, uh, which is talking about Arjuna is asking Krishna, what are the best foods to eat? So he's just straight up asking him. Krishna says, foods dear to those in the mode of goodness increase the duration of life purify one's existence and give strength, health, happiness, and satisfaction. Such foods are juicy, fatty, wholesome, and pleasing to the heart. So 
juicy, but especially uh, the word fatty in there, in my mind, uh, most definitely includes meat uh, products. Now there's and there's nothing in here that nothing in here that 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 uh, bans meat. Nothing in the Bhagavad Gita uh, discourages meat consumption. And then there's even another section of it where they talk about the best way to best ways to meditate, proper ways to approach meditation. And one of the things they recommend is to sit on uh, meditate on deer skin, animal skins. So um, so animal products are okay as far as the Bhagavad Gita goes. So, so there's another thing. Um, another thing which I've mentioned before, and I find it uh, so inspiring because it is similar to my experience is Gopi Krishna in his book, Living with Kundalini, when he talks about his Kundalini experience. And from his initial activation, he experienced a negative kind of uh, awakening. And so he became very ill and unable to keep down food. And he talks earlier in the book about how he largely had gotten, gotten away from eating meat, um, you know, prior to all this. And as he was basically on his deathbed, he had a dream where a higher intelligence told him to try eating some meat. So when he woke up, he tried to eat some meat and he immediately got better. It totally righted, righted his, his whole system and his, his Kundalini activation from there thenceforward became a source of energy and vitality. The fact that he experienced this communication from a higher source, a higher part within himself, perhaps his own, his own daimon, his own kundalini, um, is, is, you know, giving him some advice. His holy guardian angel is helping kind of, you know, gently like uh, nudge him in, in one direction. It's kind of similar to what happens in Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna is asking, uh, you know, Krishna, what's the best way to meditate? What's the best thing to eat? This is essentially, um, since Krishna represents the divine principle in all individuals, Krishna also represents the higher uh, in intelligence, uh, the higher potential within us, the daimon. And so Arjuna is asking his higher self for guidance in, in what is the right thing to eat. So out there in the ordinary world, no one knows what is the right thing to eat. As a society, as a culture, we don't know what the, you know, after thousands and thousands of years, Right here on planet Earth, we do not as a as civilization know what the right thing to eat is. And there's a million different diets and all kinds of different ideas about this. And everyone's just really confused. So what some people like to say is that everyone is different and everyone has their own particular uh, dietary formula that they need to dial in for themselves. So... I'm willing to concede that possibility. Um, I'm not going to die on a hill saying that it's not true. However, my own experiences, which I'm going to talk about next, lead me to feel that it's not really true that everyone has a different, um, a, a different formula for what kinds of foods they should eat. Rather, everyone, when they start eating uh, lots of really bad and, and, and toxic types of foods, that we have a different and individualistic way in which our body 
responds with uh, a, a, you know one of many autoimmune conditions um, or insulin resistance and arthritis um, and, and various things like that. So getting back to my experience um, and the way this all unfolded for me, and I've already, I've, I've talked a lot on this show about my experience with ulcerative colitis. Um, I had, uh, I was diagnosed with it in 2014 and before I got the diagnosis and got some high powered uh, steroids and other drugs to, to set me straight, I, wa I was on my deathbed. I completely um, related to Gopi Krishna's story about not laying, on his, laying on his bed and not being able to get up because he was so in incredibly weak. Um, and I mean, it's possible that he had ulcerative colitis entirely possible um but i mean that's that's how i felt how he describes it in that book and, and this is before i'd had a kundalini awakening um so after i got uh prescribed the medicine for it this got me back to um being able to function normally although i was never fully over it i was always always felt a little bit colitis -y. and after you know uh certain certain foods would make make me feel a little more colitis -y and some a little bit less um and i went through um many different changes in my diet throughout all this i swung very close to vegan and then I tried paleo. And then, um, you know, I was, uh, you know, there's nothing would ever like ever really stick. Nothing would ever really stick. Like I would, I would try and, and get, I guess what, what you would, I would later understand as being keto, you know, I'd cut out uh, breads or, or something like that. Uh, for a while, but then I'd always come back to it and I was still drinking alcohol all the time through all of it Anyhow, so it's almost like even if I did change my diet It didn't matter so much because I was completely agitating myself with this uh, Poisonous liquid that I was pouring into myself So When I had An experience then That I could not fully account for during my morning meditation on November 15th of 2021 almost immediately from there things started to change and I didn't get any kind of new knowledge nothing specific appeared in my mind and said, eat this, don't eat that. It's just my, my palate, my palate changed. And I just started, I just, I didn't want this or I, or I wanted that. And I was not as beholden to what others might say to me. This is always one of the problems of like implementing um, any kind of unique diet is peer pressure, social pressure, when you eat out with friends or family. And um, if you change things, then they'll say something and about it. And so sometimes you just, you know, you go along with it because you don't want to, you don't want to get into it. But something had changed to where it's like, I wasn't worried about that anymore. If people were going to say anything to me about what I'm eating or asking questions. It's just, I don't want it. Um, so it was, in, 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 and it was very, it was very intuitive. Um, 
I would just, you know, start leaving behind, you know, the buns if I got a hamburger and, and I, I, I stopped doing any kind of like fried food. Um, I, um, I, I, I quit snacking. I cut down radically on sweets. Um, I got really into nuts. I was crazy about uh, pistachio nuts. I was eating those like all really, really consistently. Um, and uh, uh, tuna fish, just like raw tuna fish, I had cravings for. And, and eventually someone told me, you know, it sounds like what you're doing is basically a, a ketogenic diet. You know, and this went on for like a year, a year or two. Um, and, and around that time, uh, a family member, a cousin of mine, who I uh, met up with, uh, who likes talking about diet and stuff. We had a conversation and she said, oh, it sounds like you're on a ketogenic diet. And then she started introducing me to um, ideas about uh, the, the carnivore diet, uh, the BBB and E, you know, bacon, beef, butter and eggs diet. And so it, was, it wasn't until, um, October of 2023, where I fully went to went to that diet, um, and and in, into a carnivore diet. And you know, I could make a whole other video about all of the incredible health benefits for it. Um, and it, it it goes into a different a different sphere. And the question emerges is, was, was, you know, did, did the awakening or did the activation experience lead me this way or, or was I headed this way anyhow and, and brought along my, my feelings about it? And I, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. It's funny, you start going back trying to figure out the chain of causality of what brought you to where you are in life. And it's like, oh, there's always one thing leads to another and it gets hard, hard to say um, what happened. But I look at the activation experience as being a key thing, if not just from uh, my intuition beginning to lead me in this direction. Also, the falling away of the fear of needing always needing to maintain social obligations and need, needing to maintain a certain image and not wanting to uh, step on people's toes and 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 having a inner um, confidence and just being okay with what I know is the proper thing uh, for me and Yeah, I mentioned this earlier about how there's an idea that everyone has their own unique um, diet. And, and I do think that that is true. But I do think there are certain, some foods that everyone believes are uh, good for you and, and believes in that, you know, US, USDA's endorsement that it's good that are really like not good for you and that's like anything that has sugar in it uh you know grains and and oats and you know it's it's weird because you just see people you know who are getting they're just getting sicker they're getting bigger and you know if they 
are, if they talk to me about any of this stuff, they just double, they double down and dig in on, on their current diet and they're definitely not going to change anything. So honestly, I hesitate to talk to anyone about it anymore. Um, I think putting it out on a video here where no one can really uh, respond to me is about as far as I really want to go with it. Um, but I'll let that go. And yeah, everyone is in a different place and needs to figure out what, what, what they need to do. Um, but for myself, it was listening to that, that higher intuition that, that just kind of guided me, just being available to that, you know? Um, it, it's not like I even thought about it or made decisions about things. It's just like I knew what I was going to do, to do next and I, and I did it. Um, and I look back on it now and I'm really happy that I did. And I saw a guy on, on YouTube a uh, British guy, uh, he was on uh, Ken Berry's show, and he ended up having to get, and from ulcerative colitis, he had to get an ileostomy. In other words, he had, his, had to have his colon all totally removed, and get a, and he has a colostomy bag. And, and now he's gone carnivore, and he can see, you know, the foods coming through directly into the bag. And so he knows that meat all gets absorbed in your body. The only thing that comes through is, you know, vegetables and, you know, um, all, all the things that they, that they, it's exactly the opposite of what they told us. Like I remember being told when I was in high school by a vegan hippie chick that meat stays in your colon and, and rots there. Um, it, it's just an absolute lie. The reverse is true. You know, it's like corn and mushrooms like sit in your colon forever and uh, create blockages. All of the meat like gets absorbed and it's nutrient, nutrient dense. So when I think of feeding Kundalini, feeding the the fire force within, I think red meat, 100% uh, red meat. I, uh, listening to this guy's story about the colostomy bag, that reminded me of my situation exactly when I first got diagnosed with it. I was afraid that, that would, uh, I would eventually be in that situation. Because my first round of like, medication things didn't work i had to go through this whole like deal and find a different doctor who finally gave me uh you know prednisone and, and some other drugs and, and got me on a regular regimen but initially when i got treatment for it it didn't work and then i fell off the treatment and it got it got even worse but you know i went online i was desperate to find out information about this so i went online looking up information and saw um, I mean, there's all these people, especially in the UK and Canada, talking about how they, you know, it, the same thing as me, the doctor tells me to eat the same stuff, you know, oh yeah, follow the four basic food groups, you know, get lots of fruits and vegetables, and you know, that's all doctors know how to say, is follow the, the food pyramid. There's no doctor, you know, standard doctor that's gonna tell you anything different than that. And, um, you know, people are talking about how it just, it was getting worse and worse and they had to get a, a colostomy or ileostomy. And um, it's just terrifying. So anyhow, I see this guy's story and I think that, I mean, that could have been me if I hadn't gone in this other direction. So eventually it led me to where, um, so I guess to back up, I skipped like a really important uh, piece of this story is that after finally going to that uh, total carnivore diet, that was around um, really about six, eight, six to eight months ago now, um, all, of my, all of my colitis symptoms vanished 
Um, I stopped the medication and I'm just, I'm just like a normal human being again. Um, and it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I have no, um, no regrets whatsoever. And finally, in Ospinsky's book, In Search of the Miraculous, he gives us something called the Diagram of Everything Living. And what this diagram does, it's a stair step kind of thing. I'm gonna put it up here. Um, and you can see it's a ladder going up from the lowest life forms from like metals, minerals, uh, those are living organisms too, to plants, then invertebrates, vertebrates, then man. Then above man is angels, archangels going on up. So what this tells me is that in terms of hydrogens, and cosmic substances, it is more healthy for man to eat what is like closer to him, what is like right next behind him on the scale. See, this happens all the time on, uh, there's all these, with, uh, with these ladder metaphors and these scale metaphors that you reach back to what is right behind you and you reach forward to what is like right in front of you. This is in The Secret of the Golden Flower, too. It says one should not wish to skip the intermediary steps, right? So you help the person who's right under you. You help and you, and you seek help from what is like right above you, which means that the best foods for us are from vertebrates, which is red meat. There's also invertebrates on there. So you can have some crustaceans and stuff if you want, uh, it, it won't kill you. But then you get down into plants and it's getting further and further away and it's the grain. So Paul Saladino kind of talks about this too. Um, so going from scientism to actual science, it's like the, the, molecular, the molecular structure of, of meat is more uh, congruent with our the molecular structure of our body. And that is one reason why we can break it down and we can absorb it better. Whereas like the molecular structure for plants is like, it's kind of really different. It's, it's, it's kind of a different thing altogether. It's, it's almost like an alien. They're like alien entities. Like if you eat plants, it's like you're eating some kind of alien, uh, alien force. And so, and, that, and that's why it's making you sick. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, those are my opinions for me. Um, it's entirely possible that every individual in the world has a different magical key for what they're supposed to eat, even though for thousands of years we all lived in one, you know, pretty much the same areas and only had the same options for food. Only very recently in human history have things opened up to where, oh my God, there's a million different kinds of foods anyone can eat. Um, it's a very recent thing in human history. Um, so it, it, it doesn't make sense considering that our bodies evolve over millions of years. Our biology is a result of like, it's, it's, it's more in line with what happened a million years ago than, than it is with what happened a uh, hundred years ago. So even like uh, the hist historical record and, and evolutionary biology uh, indicates that now it's not true that everyone has a special combination of the, the best thing to eat. Although I do think it's true that everyone has an individual combination of how they start to manifest uh, disease um, as a result of foods that aren't that great for you. So, the moral of this whole story is to always stay true 
go against the grain and keep the dark fires burning.